guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, welcome. I am so happy you're here. You are at Creativity and Inspiration, and I am Lisa. Woohoo! Today is an amazing day. It's the beginning of our week. We are full of energy and ready to get started. What we're working on today is how to make mixed media collage art for the beginner. How to layer, how to create that texture, that movement, that interest, and still make it mean something. Because so many people have reached out to me here lately and said, Hey, I've been trying to do this glue book thing. I don't understand what it is. Could you do a video please and help us? And I mean, seriously, like I think 30 people have reached out to me over the past like month. And I thought, okay, today's a good day to do it because I didn't want to do another Valentine's video. No offense to everybody's Valentine's videos. I love them. In fact, I have one more Valentine's video coming up for you guys that you haven't seen. It's brand new, nobody's channel, so stay tuned for that. But I thought today was a great day. It's the beginning of the week. Let's tell everybody how to do a mixed media collage, mixed media art, collage, mixed media art piece. So let's just get started because I think everybody kind of gets bogged down that this should look one way or it should just be one topic or, okay, that's the thing when you do a mixed media collage or a collage mixed media art, you do have a topic, but you don't have to. It doesn't have to be a subject. It can be anything you want it to be, but some people are like, they're thinking, oh, I think it has to be art related or it has to be it can be whatever you want okay and think of how you collage when you make um little clusters for journals or how you collage if you decoupage on a tray you might layer your pieces doing mixed media collage or collage mixed media art is the same way and yeah let's just get into it first i'm going to show you a few examples that I've done and show you the different ways that you can do this and then we'll do a page together. And instead of doing this on a canvas, I'm just going to do this in my glue book that I use, but it's actually kind of a glue book, an art book, and a collage book all together. So, and, and that's one thing. Don't limit yourself. Maybe today you want to do collage. Maybe tomorrow you just want to do a glue book. Maybe the next day you want to do an art journal. You don't have to have 20 separate journals if you don't want to. If you want to, it's fine. So this is my first collage mixed media piece. And it is a mixture of, and since it's Valentine's Day, I thought I'd show this one first since it's close. It's a mixture of just base pages with paint, book pages with paint on them, uh, Valentine's like tissue paper, a paint chip, some writing, and then some magazine pictures right here and some words piece up here. And I kind of just collaged it however I was feeling like I saw it in my head. And I didn't use any base pieces except for one on this one. And the base pieces are, of course, your book pages, your music pages, your graph paper, that sort of thing. Things that we always put as our base and we build on. You don't have to do that. And this is a perfect example of not doing that. This is another collage piece where I used, of course, stamps. I used uh, washi tape and I used magazine uh, postcards and images and words. And I put it all together and I think it came out adorable. And this one, of course, the inspiration was my little dog, Sam and Henry. Okay. And then that's an example of it being an art journal. Okay, our next collage piece is this one. And this is my um, kind of vintage, everything vintage that I love. It, this one has a theme of vintage. It's layered on, there's writing, there's stamping, there's outlining. And then the next one is this one, and this is Kitchen. And I did a little journaling on this one, but it's mostly collage. And then this one is, again, collage. It's got some base papers that aren't your typical base papers, but it's got this base paper, and it's got 
mixture of bright and light and colors and pinks. The inspiration for this was I'm a Dreamer. And it says I'm a Dreamer right there. This one, the inspiration is to kind of get in the feel for redoing my backyard. You know, trees, lemon tree, flowers, the colors, the greens, the oranges, the oranges from the monarch butterflies. It's kind of all kind of like an inspiration board, but a non-traditional inspiration board. This is like an artistic inspiration board, but it's a collage mixed media piece as well. Then this one, oh, where'd it go? Then this one is more traditional mixed media uh, collage piece. It has our base papers, our music paper, and our book pages. But the theme of this was calm, and so I used lavender, and that's why it's all kind of purple. It's all the same color, and that was the theme for this one was calmness, lavender. And then the theme for this one was like orange. So you can do mixed media collage pieces different, you know, by colors, by wanting to be calm. You can do them like a zen thing. You can do them as inspiration for a redecorating. You can do them however you want. Okay, so they don't have to have a certain theme and they definitely don't have to be art, art related. Okay, so this one on this page, I just pulled a bunch of papers and we're going to use, I love this paper. I have a little bit of it left. If you know me, you've seen it. I have the inside of an art of an envelope because don't forget to look inside your envelopes. They're very artsy. I have some book pages. I have just some papers and a yellow doily. And then I have a pig because this paper, this scrapbook paper has fruit on it. I don't know if I'm going to use the pig because I really don't like eating meat. But anyway, let's build our base and then we will start our collaging on top of it. Okay. And the theme for this one, I think, will probably end up being yellow, greens, and outside. But let's build our base. And you can also use paint. For a collage, it doesn't have to be all paper. That's where people kind of get, you know, kind of wrong that it doesn't have to be certain things. And that was a lot of the questions I got. Does it have to be, you know, art related? Because that's all I can find. Does it have to be um, certain? Does it have to be all paper? No, it can be definitely can be more than just paper. Since it's going to be an outside theme, I think I'm going to throw in one of these green stamp pages. Because remember, the base doesn't have to be what it always is. You can make your base whatever you want it to be. Don't get dragged down either, because that was people like, oh, I don't have music paper, or I don't have this. Use what you have, okay? If you don't have coffee dyed paper, then don't use coffee dyed paper. Use what you have. And right now, I am pulling scraps out of everywhere. And I'm going to leave some white. It doesn't have to all be covered, okay? That's wrong, too. There can be white space, guys. Okay. I think we'll do it like... We're going to do it like that. So we have some white space and some, um, okay. So I think we're going to do it. Let's see if I can get you a better angle. Hold on. Okay, guys, I got you a better angle so you can see exactly what I'm doing. So like I said, you, you want some white space in this. So don't cover everything up. And kind of change, like if you orientate one book page this way, then orientate the other one either crooked or a different way. They don't, you know, it doesn't have to be uniform. You want it kind of different. In fact, I think. And don't be afraid to tear papers up 
you know what I'm saying, and mix them up, okay? See how I kind of changed everything as a different orientation? We'll go with this, and you just glue it down. You can use Mod Podge or whatever you want. You can use tape for this even, but it ends up being more of a mess. So I'm actually not going to use tape this time, which is probably a shocker for everybody that watches me do stuff. And I lay them out just to get the idea because I want white space and stuff. But if I don't put them back just as I had them, I'm not going to be upset. Because it, it'll be close enough to what I wanted. Oh, I got the cutest picture while out walking the dogs. I normally don't take pictures, but the sun was at a good angle and I got the cutest shot. So... If you haven't been over to my Instagram, head over there, and it's so cute. Well, I haven't actually put it up yet, but head over there, and it'll be up by the time you guys watch this. So there's our base. Looks good. Now I'm going to go in with our second layer, which is our patterned papers, and I'm just going to layer them on. And don't be afraid to rip and snip and turn papers over if they're double-sided. And if you cover something up totally, you just do. That's part of the creative process, right? Let it talk to you. Let the paper and the, the orientation, all of that talk to you. Like that, and then we'll be to our next layer, which will be our main focuses. Yeah. Now, at this point, because you're doing your second layer, and they're going to show more in collage, if you want to come ink some of your pages so they stand out, do that. I'm going to use black ink because that's what the washi tape border is on there. But you didn't have to match that if you're, you know, you can do, if you want to do a yellow or a green, if you're doing a main color, like I think this one's going to end up being kind of like yellow and green themed. So I will definitely, you know, if I had, if I want to, I could do that, but I'm going to go with the black. But when you create collage, you just layer and layer and then the top layer which is your final layer, which is your main focus, what you want to have the main focus, could be, since there's so much color here, I think instead of doing the color photos, what we'll do is we'll come back with a black and white fo uh, magazine picture. So let's get this all down, and then we'll come back with the top layer, the final layer, and you'll see what I'm talking about. And you'll see how the layering kind of all ties together, all brings it together. Okay, let's put some glue. And like I said, don't be afraid to rip and tear and do all of that. And if you want to um, ink your edges or some of your edges, but not all, that's good too. That's what I'm doing here. I ink some. I'm not going to ink all, but you'll see why in a minute. Because one thing with collage is you want layers, you want texture, and you want movement. You don't want somebody to look at it and be stuck. What What's the purpose? What am I supposed to be doing? You could even, and I think I'll do that on this, once you collage it, your main focus could end up being a painting or a drawing or something like that. So, and if you watch this piece down at the bottom that I'm gluing is kind of, it's got a weird shape to it. I'm putting extra glue because it's all folded and it's going to bubble up. Okay, see there's a section missing out of this end. So I'm going to put this end down here. Okay, I'm going to tear another section out. I should have done that before I glued, but that's okay. 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 So this thinner section to the bigger section, I'm going to put like that. And that's going to help guide your eye. 
So is something else I'm going to do over here. Okay, let me glue this piece down. Okay, I'm gonna glue this one kind of crooked, that way the orientations are not all the same. But you're like, hey, it's kind of heavy on this side and empty on this side, I know that, and I'm gonna show you why in just two seconds here. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a book page. Okay, I've got a book page here and I am going to get a black and white hummingbird. So hold on just a second. Okay, guys, what I did was I went and found a free coloring book page of a hummingbird, and I cut it out. I shrank it down some, and I cut it out, and now I'm going to cut it out again, but I'm going to leave some of the words around it, but I can't use the whole page because it's too big. Now, if you were doing this on a canvas, you could use a whole sheet, and it would look really good, but because I'm doing it in my collage slash art slash glue book. I, I need to trim it down some. I, I just trimmed around to roughly get the shape, but you still get the words, which gives it a cool vibe. And then I'm gonna put it right here in this blank spot. And you see how it's popping and your eyes going, hmm. I need something else, something else, something else. Okay. Okay, so when I put the bird down, it wasn't quite popping in this area enough. So I had another sheet of my scrapbook paper, but I flipped it over and I'm gonna glue this down again. So we're gonna glue this down again, and then I'm gonna go in and trim it again leaving the green to show because I need that color. So get my scissors again, push it down, make sure it sticks. If it has some wrinkles in it, that's fine because wrinkles give us interesting movement and texture. And don't be afraid if you're making one of these, you know, a collage piece and it doesn't look the way you pictured it, keep adding to it until you find the look you're going for. And that's it. Now you see how much my little bird pops and then you flow to this page like he's flying off the page because I created movement going from not a lot of co color on this side except for him to make him stand out to this side that has a ton of color. So your eye reads that way. Not to mention our eye reads from left to right anyway, which is natural and it feels natural. So the story that I'm portraying in my collage mixed media art here makes sense. Okay, now I'm gonna get this down and we're gonna get some words going. Okay. And we're gonna do some stamping to add some texture. And for stamping, I have a music stamp I'm gonna use. And if you notice, I use more book paper. I didn't use uh, music paper. If I'd use more music paper, I would use a book stamp. That way your eye doesn't read too heavy on one or the other. And then I'm not stamping the whole stamp. I'm just gonna stamp a quarter. And then you come in and you can do dark and light and just kind of do all over it. Doesn't matter if it's on your other papers or not. Okay. And then you can come in with a second stamp and I'm gonna use my um, dandelion stamp. I'm gonna come in with my dandelion stamp next. 
And I'm going to use the stem part. So I'm going to just do it from that end. And that gives like a different texture to everything. Okay. And you could even turn it around if you want to and get a dandelion on there as well. Don't be afraid to stamp your main images either. Okay, there's our texture now. And now I'm going to come in with a little outlining. I have my mixed media pen. I will link these below. They're great for outlining. They don't smudge a lot. Now my bird is outlined, which is good. So I might come in here and outline some of the flowers since we're doing like that. And outline some of the leaves. Okay. There we go. That just makes it pop more. There you you see the um you see the flowers now, so the story makes even more sense. And then we're going to put some words. We're going to put some words up in this blank space. So let's see what I have as far as words go. I have one of these Tim Holtz words books, but if you don't have anything like this, just write your words. And I'm going to do black on white. Yeah, these because I think it'll stand out better. How about this? Live each day with grace and authenticity. So I'm going to take that and put this back over behind me. Okay, and I'm going to cut it and I'm going to put it on a piece of white paper. I'm going to use an index card because I have some of those. I'm going to cut this in half. I'm going to cut it right in between live each day with, and I'm going to cut it, and it says grace and dignity, so I'm going to put it like that. Oh, sorry, my neighbor is going to start yard work. Ah. Okay, and there's that, and I'm going to do it like that, and I'm going to come back and cut this out, and I'm going to use some, let's see, I'm going to use some scissors to give it an edge. There you go. I got the words all cut out and they go right there. So I'm gonna glue that down. And then I'm gonna come back with my mixed media pen. And I'm going to go around these. Okay, like that, and it stands out. You can even go over that multiple times just to make it really stand out. That's okay. That's actually another video that it's okay to go around something multiple times. So around something multiple times kind of make it scribbly looking, but it's not really. It's on purpose. Just makes it stand out more, makes it pop and see, it just looks better. Okay, guys, here is our finished collage mixed media work of art on this side with our cute hummingbird and all of the flowers and leaves outside that attracts him. I hope you like this and to answer some questions I got, I hope I, I hope I answered some of your questions that I received. Do, it doesn't have to be art related. For some reason people think that mixed media collage has to be art related or um, modern, you know, you can't tell what it is, but that's not the case, guys. It can be whatever's inspiring you for that day or where you're creating. Maybe where you're creating inspires something. This page is outside. It has a hummingbird. It was next to a page that was inspired for my backyard. So this page inspired this page and that's how it happens. A lot of times 
mixed media inspires more mixed media. Sometimes maybe you're thinking, oh, I'm down and I want to be happy or I need to calm down like my lavender page. Sometimes your mood, all the time your mood, sometimes your mood. Sometimes if you're hungry, you will end up doing a food mixed media. Sometimes um, if you're angry, it will come out in a collage mixed media. Let it come out. Let whatever you're feeling, whatever's going on, whatever is inspiring you, come out in your collaged mixed media art because that is the best kind of collage mixed media art. When it's inspired from within, not when you're searching for something to do. Because if you're searching for something to do, it's never going to come out right. Also, don't be afraid if you're creating and it kind of goes like this and you're like going one direction, but then it goes this way and this way. Because that's what collage mixed media does. If you look at this, I wasn't planning on having a black and white hummingbird on this side, but I did because I realized the colors were calling to this side and I needed something that would come across that would go towards the flowers and a hummingbird came to mind. Also, I wasn't planning on using the green stamps, but when I decided to do an outside type scene, you know, they're green and they kind of work their way in. So just go with whatever hits you. I guarantee you in the end, you'll be very happy. Also, don't ever forget to put your words on. Don't forget or don't be afraid to do your stamping or your uh, doodling, doodling around things, doodling on the page itself, because that adds a ton of interest and movement and texture to it. And that's what it's all about. So guys, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please be sure and give it a thumbs up. Also, hit that subscribe button and that little notification bell. I tell you, we've got a lot coming up on this channel. I have got... I have got organization videos. I have got um, more crafting videos. I've got a Valentine's video that I guarantee nobody's done. That's coming up. I have got, um, I'm redecorating my house. So we're going to have a lot of redecorating videos and making our own home decor and going and buying it. We're going to be reviewing items from stores like Target and Home Goods and Amazon. Also, check out my Becoming Female. It's all about us. It's all about women and what we do and what we go through. Video this week over on my Becoming Female channel is about facial hair, unwanted facial hair. I have topics about weight. I have topics about food. I mean, there is the website you need to check out too. Is It's got health and fitness. It's got lifestyle and travel. It has... Um, oh gosh, just tons of things. Go over there and check it out. Also, be sure and check out my art channel, uh, my art website. I have kits. I have mixed media kits on my website if you want to get a mixed media kit. With that mixed media kit, you get a video that nobody else can see. And it's me basically teaching a class of mixed media. You will get a video of me teaching or my vision of what I saw the kit being. And you, can, if you've never done mixed media, it's a great learning video. If you've done mixed media, take it and watch it and then create your own. You know, I'm here for inspiration, guys. So anyway, thanks for being here. Check out all my other channels, all my websites. Take care. Have an awesome day. And I'll see you next time. Bye.